All righty. G'day, Tripod family. Uh, welcome to the Tripod Live Show with Clarky and Winnie. And welcome to all those that are now joining via my Instagram or Facebook. We are live all over social media with our Round 7 NRL preview. My name is Dane. I'm from Clarky's Rugby League column, and I'm joined every week by my co-host, Winnie, who is the founder of Tripod. It's his 10th consecutive season running this show. All nine to date have uh, resulted in profitable seasons. So if you want our preview and analysis on all eight NRL games in just under an hour, you're 18 plus and you like to have a punt on the NRL, this live show is for you. And we welcome you with a much warmer heart than what Casey Badger showed my Titans last Sunday. Winnie, how are you going, my brother? I am very well, thank you. Uh, let's talk about betting results first of all. Just two and two best bets last week, 13 and 11 for the season. That's mediocre. That's 54% slight profit. We won the mixed matchup, which was great. We're three and three over six weeks on that. And remember, that's plus odds. So again, slight profit. We didn't win any SGMs over the weekend, but of course, we've still got that $11 winner. Not that we can ride that all season long, but one winner at 11, two pushes, and six losses. I'm aching on the SGM. So you're up like five multi units there. Some people know I'm a big NBA fan. The regular season just came to an end. I can't wait for the playoffs, but it was especially exciting for me because I had two division tips and they both won at 11s and 750. And I've got a bizarre story to share about that, but I'll keep that to the end. I'm very excited because the pod magic round in collaboration with Toppy is confirmed and there's going to be ways for people to win tickets and join us. But I'll talk about that more later as well. But how about yourself, mate? Uh, like, how was your weekend? Did you get up to anything? Mate, it was honestly a good weekend. Like, um, uh, you know, I was going to sit here and make a joke that I missed the show because I was on a Crime Stopper uh, on the line to Crime Stoppers at Giro Stadium. But in all reality, it wasn't a robbery. I'm only just mucking around there. Uh, mate, great to see a bit of effort from my Titans. And uh, that is definitely something we needed to to show with how we played so far this year. Uh, but yeah, man, really excited for this round. I'm not do, sure do you want bigger. any more to say? I know people want to hear from you. Do you want to say anything else about the game? Obviously, a lot has been said. Like, I yeah. thought oh, I might be a bit biased, but when I came on social media and saw everybody, even neutrals, I have no disrespect, the Titans don't have a lot of fans, but it seemed like everybody was up in arms about the game. So you have some reasons to uh, reasons to have grievances, and you were there in attendance. But I have the final word on the game before we kind of look forward. Yeah, I think everyone wants my final word on the game because then they can call me salty when I complain that we lost. But um, look, yes. in all reality, I'm I'm happy the Raiders got the win. Yes, it's really unfortunate that the no, you're not. that. <laughs> well, look, Come I'm on, not speak happy. the truth. That's what we do here. I, I'm not happy they got the win, but I'm I'm not angry because we showed effort for 80 minutes. Do you know what I mean? Like you take the result out of it and you just look at the 80 minutes for the Titans. That's the best we've looked in a long time. So I'm, I'm not angry with the Raiders winning for that reason. Obviously, I love the two competition points, but, you know, I'm realistic as a Titans fan. It, it's not like finals seems that likely for us this year. So in all reality, just showing up for 80 minutes and the emergence of players like Jimmy Jolliff, who was awesome, with Tino missing, I think that's sort of the steps for the future. Um, I know you're an NBA man, so you'll appreciate this one. It's like when um, the Warriors had Stephen Curry and Clay Thompson missing for that year and they blooded all those young guys like Jordan Poole, um, et cetera, et cetera. I'm, I'm not too big of an NBA fan, but I know it helped them in future seasons. I'm hoping that's the case for us. But honestly, happy to take my hat off and say the Raiders were the better yeah. team. I don't know. There's one difference. That year where Curry was injured, they they had a really bad record. They got a high draft pick. Yes. So at least so in the NBA, you, when you lose, you can be like, well, if we come last, we get the top draft pick. There is no such thing in a rugby league. Unfortunately, that's a debate for another day. Uh, my final, I said a lot about the game, and I was pretty emotional because I was hot off the uh, watching it coming in live. But I thought about it a little bit more. Let's just say this. I think you could liken the game to the Tigers-Cowboys a couple of years ago that we all remember up in Townsville where the Tigers got an awful call that decided the game at the end and everyone felt bad for them for a couple of weeks. But it didn't really affect the season. It didn't affect where the Tigers went. Everyone who wasn't a Tigers fan forgot about it after a couple of weeks. Hey, it might have helped the Cowboys out with their seeding and that win may go a long way into the Raiders' finals push. But you feel bad, but um, these things happen. It would be worse if it was a finals game or if it was, like, a, a game that you needed to, like, make the finals, for example, as you kind of touched on there. Uh, you got anything else, or do we want to roll into best bets? I mean, we're right at the five-minute mark, which is when we promise we deliver. Yeah, let's draw back the curtains, roll out the red carpet, and present our round seven NRL best bets. Hit me up, Winnie. What have you got? Okay, so 
I will go into these in more depth later on, but I'm going to go Warriors again. They play the Dragons. They're away, but I'm going minus five and a half dollar ninety. To me, they just are the superior team. If I had to pick the biggest edge, I think the likes of a, a Wade Egan can really turn this team around and put someone through the back of them. Uh, but <laughs> New Zealand's superior. The line's under a converted try. Similar story with Eels Dolphins, although the line is not under a converted try, but I will take the alt line minus a flat six on Toppy. So that's a dollar eighty-two. Uh, Parramatta playing my fins in Darwin. And as I speak, I'm also backing at minus five and a half, but that's a dollar seventy-eight on Dabble. So you can play that. That's probably an even better bet, four less cents, but you don't push on six. But that wouldn't count as a Official play, so official play minus flat six. And to me, the the Dolphins are missing what arguably their four best players. Herbie's yeah. out, Eagles out. They lost Gilbert preseason, and now the Hammer. The Eels showed me good signs of life. I think the Eels will just be too strong. More familiar with the conditions up there in Darwin as well. I'm going the Canberra Raiders on Saturday night in Brisbane, plus eight and a half, a dollar ninety better. And my main reasoning is that. Canberra, I respect what they're doing. Like, I went against them last week, but that was fine. I don't think they deserve to beat your Titans, and we covered with the plus 10.5. But overall, I still admire, like, a lot of the players that I didn't know too well coming into this year are really clicking. I can't deny that. And Brisbane has been going along well, and this will be my third straight week backing against Brisbane, and I've been burned the last two. But you cannot forget there's no Reynolds, there's no Haas. So the team that was a buzzsaw through the majority of the competition last year. You can't expect Brisbane to be that good. I give the Raiders a chance at Suncorp, so therefore I'll take the eight and a half. And finally on Sunday, I like the dogs, and I think the best way to play them against Newcastle is plus half a try in the try handicap. That's team to score more tries. Mark it at $1.80 on 365 because I think it's a very tough game to split. I think there's a bit to like about both sides. I'm not certain about the status of Ponga or if he's 100%. And if I have to pick a winner, I'm going Bulldogs, but I don't need them to win. I just need them to score an equal number of tries uh, or, of course, more. And if they managed it down in Melbourne, I think they can manage it at home on Sunday as well. Mixed matchup to come to. Mate, I wasn't being rude there. You were an absolute market mover. As soon as you said Warriors and Eels, I was trying to bet, and it kept coming up. Prices changed, prices changed, prices changed three times there. So uh, wasn't being rude. That's why I was looking down. Are you down. sure that wasn't because they saw you betting? They might have saw your bet coming in. They're going, oh, we need to change these odds. You got to give yourself some extra credit, mate. Hey, I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to reveal any secrets here to do with that. But I do want to let people know we are considering a new segment. Uh, we found this TikTok guy, and I know you. This is something you've done in the past, Winnie, where you start off with ten dollars and you kind of build the triangle each week. Um, it's something we're looking at in the background. Basically, the way we would do it is uh, when he would put out his best bets. It's a live show, so we'd refer to the comments and you guys would let us know which one you love the most. Whatever gets the most crowd love would be our sort of team bet for the week and we'd try to build that triangle out. And Winnie, this week, I want to go rapid fire for you no longer than a minute before we get into our preview. Storm vest Roosters, will this be game of the round? Yes or no answers only? Yes or no. I'll give you some, Absolutely, I'll say. There's been some rippers over the years. Chance to cook start around 250 metres against the Dragons or more. That's a lot of metres. I'll say no. Eels v Dolphins in Darwin. Over 20 combined errors in the contest. With the humidity, there's a fair chance of that. I'll say yes. Three out of the five Panthers outside back score against the Tigers in Bathurst. Still no Cleary to set them up, so I'd probably say no. Titans find their first win of 2024? No. Broncos so v Raiders. Over 38 points combined. Speed to burn for both teams, I'd say yes. Bulldogs v Knights, three tries to be scored by all wingers in the game combined. I like some of the wingers in that game, but three is a fair few. It could be tight. It could actually be lower scoring. I'll say no. This one's a bowl one. Sharks v Cowboys to go to Golden Point. Well, it's unlikely to pick any game to go to Golden Point, but I always think about that crazy finals matchup when they both uh, had a great year a couple of years ago. Uh, and I think this one could be tight. I need some serious analysis from you here. Rabbitohs, will they hold the bye to 1-12, to 12, or do you think it's going to go 13-plus against them with their current form? <laughs> you know, I was going to say that <laughs> it's going to be another week and counting that the Souths, unfortunately, can't cover the line. 
Yep, it's, uh, that, that spread is growing by the week. All right, well, that's a taste of what's to come in our preview. Before we launch into our game-by-game -game analysis for round seven, let's hear from the bookie's perspective. It's our resident CEO, the one, the only, Tristan Merlihan from Top Sport. G'day, everyone. It's Tristan Merlihan here from Top Sport, and uh, we come off a week that uh, there's been a lot of talk about the referee decisions. Um, you know, there's been a, been a couple of interesting games in that respect. Obviously, as a Titans fan, it was a bitter pill to swallow, uh, Going down in Golden Point to Canberra, I thought the Titans put a massive effort in, particularly the defence. There's been lots of discussion both sides as to, you know, all the hold downs and, and, and the six agains and the lopsided penalty count and then that offside late. So everyone has a different view, I think, depending on which glasses you wear. But it was much better effort. Hopefully they can bounce back next week. For us, that would have been a huge result if we could have uh, got the Titans up from the book perspective. There was a lot of money at the minus as well. So it wasn't a horrible result, but if they had got the chocolates, it would have been a big one. Um, from our end, the best result of the uh, the weekend was the Thursday night game where the uh, the, the Roosters knocked off the, the Knights. So that was a really positive result. The one that was painful was the Sharks against the, the Rabbits where the Sharks were very, very well backed all week. And obviously the mixed matchup got up late in that one as well. So uh, then just looking ahead at this week, the teams haven't adjusted too much. Probably the biggest one is the Eels against the Dolphins where the Dolphins are decimated by their injuries. The other games have all pretty much stayed where they were before the teams dropped just recently, so we haven't made too many big adjustments there. I think there's still a few players potentially in doubt. Just keep an eye on the Kalen Ponga news. Obviously, there's a few little question marks there and a few of those other players that have been named that I suppose you just got to make sure they actually line up as they get to the, the final team list. So good luck if you're having a bet over the weekend, and, of course, gamble responsibly. And as Keegan points out there, let's cross live to Tristan at the Macca's drive through I think he was the one to say he was on uh, vacation time in Hawaii or something with the shirt on last week. Am I correct in that? Yeah, where in the world is Tristan coming from us each, uh, coming to us from each week? You know what? We get to catch up with him in person, mate, because I can say Magic Round Tripod Top Sport event is a goer for 2024. We loved it in 2023. Got to catch up with so many people. Had a fantastic day. We're going to go similar plan. So Sunday, May 19th, which means if you're going, you're going to be able to see us there. But if you're not yet, we have tickets to give away. So it was too much to actually organise for today. But in the next few weeks, for sure, there'll be opportunities to win tickets for people that watch us live, for people who watch it afterwards, uh, commenting on YouTube, people in our, in the Tripod group and on Clarkie's page as well. So just all I can say is stay tuned. It's more than just great tickets for the day, the triple header. Uh, there's prizes, drinks, and meet some of your pod favourites, including... Uh, Clarky himself coming up north for it for your first ever Magic Round, right? First ever Magic Round. It promises to be a great day. Really looking forward to it and getting creative. G'day, everyone. It's Tristan Merlihan here from Top Sport. And, uh... Total glitch there. Sorry. <laughs> you know what? I was trying to be clever. Can you see this? I can see that. Does that yes. come up? <laughs> okay, I don't know. It didn't seem to work, but I was going to say, Matt, you know, you get to see Clarky live in attendance. That's what he really looks like uh, if you <laughs> do win tickets to our Magic Round event. That's my uh, face if any of our bets lose at Magic Round. Yeah, that's how I'll be just staring at the ground. <laughs> All righty, let's jump into our game-by-game -game preview. Thursday night, it's the Roosters v. Storm. We're at Allianz Stadium, and the line is a pick -em. For the Roosters, James Tedesco returns from concussion, so Joey Manu shifts to centre, and Joey Suwali is on the wing. Egan Butcher replaces the unavailable Satili Tupanua, and Sam Walker is named in reserves. He's a chance to return, but it's not confirmed. For the Storm, they welcome back big Nelson Asafa Solomona. He replaces the injured Tui Kamakamitha. Winnie, these are two competition heavyweights, realistically, from the past decade. Only the Storm's second time on the road this year. They did lose their only other time on the road. Uh, meanwhile, the Roosters are coming off a win, but they're yet to record back-to-back -back wins this year. So who do you prefer in this one? It's a tough one, eh? They're both coming off very narrow wins, two-point wins last week. Uh, I would say that Melbourne's been fortunate, and I mentioned this on the recap, three different times this year, they've been trailing with 10 to go or less and won those games. Of course, you've got the big ends of Teddy. I'm a bit confused. Well, I guess Walker's in the reserves, but you'd expect that he would also play. Nelson starting at prop. I'm just thinking how good are these opening exchanges going to be? I can't blame Melbourne. I think just based on the current line, it would suggest that Melbourne's the better team, that it's at Pickham at Allianz. I'm not sure, like, especially with the concern that Munster is not the same superstar player who can dominate games like he once did, just as he manages this groin. And, you, like, Melbourne was underwhelming defensively against Brisbane. Then they flailed a bit in attack at times against the Dogs. However, I could really see them putting it together. You've kind of, like, uh, 
you know, you get these narrow victories, but you can improve on it each week. I could definitely see this game being circled and Storm being up for it. But then I look at the Roosters, I would say that their strength is their forward pack, and that's what led them to victory in Newcastle, along with a Herculean effort by Joey Manu, of course. I would tip the Roosters because I think they're as good as Melbourne and at home, but it's not high high confidence. You know, I go, we talked about Ponga in reference to uh, I, I'm actually taking on Newcastle this week. It's like if Ponga doesn't get injured last week, I think the Knights probably win that one too. So the Roosters just haven't been that convincing, and, and I'm a Rooster lover. So uh, last thought is, of course, Finals revenge. Remember how the Roosters season ended last year with Warbrick skying for that uh, unforgettable match-winning try in round in week two of the finals. And maybe that little bit of revenge factor also gets the Roosters over the line if you're pressing me for a tip. Yeah, this is a really tough one for me as well. I can see Luke Burrow on YouTube says the Storm are tough, Roosters are gross. Whilst you have to always acknowledge the Melbourne Storm, you can never underestimate them. I don't think they've got that same hard edge to them this year. They have let some teams back in. Like, you know, the Melbourne Storm are their best. Don't almost lose to the Doggies at Amy Park where they hadn't lost in, you know, almost a whole season, uh, longer than a whole season realistically. So I do like the Roosters here. I think if you look strictly at their last 120 minutes of footy, and that excludes the Bulldogs' first half, of course, they have been pretty good despite some disruptions to their lineup um, throughout that time. Now, it has been five years since the Roosters have defeated the Storm in Sydney and they have lost eight of their last nine games to the men from Melbourne. With that being said, I just think the Roosters can pose some questions to this Storm's defense in their middle. The Roosters have the most supporting plays of any player this year, and they're also up there around the tackle break count. Actually, I think they lead it. Um, So they are shifting the footy well. They're asking questions. And players like Victor Radley are sort of returning back to that confidence level, where last year the Roosters' confidence really dipped and waned throughout the season. This year their big guns are performing very well, um, for what it's worth, I th- I expect Sam Walker to play because if a player was absolutely no chance with a, a concussion, which is head trauma, you wouldn't name them in reserves. So I do expect him to come back, but I'm not a neurologist, so don't take that for uh, the gospel of the Lord. I'll go the Roosters in this one. I think they can send a bit of a message to the rest of the competition that, hey, we're still here uh, by defeating the currently second-placed Melbourne Storm. I mean, you are a lot of things, mate. You've been—I've seen you called a lot of names in the last twenty-four <laughs> hours. But one is not a neurologist. That stat again: the Roosters have not won against the Storm in Sydney, so the Storm's been going up and beating them. But of course, five years would would overlap COVID, so there's probably a couple of times when they didn't meet in Sydney. Uh, still, that's all the more I'd say motivation. Like, oh, that's the thing about these trends. You can read into that and say, "Oh, Melbourne go, knows how to go in there and win." And I read into it as saying that that's extra focus for the side that that wants to break that streak. But uh, it's, it's interesting to know nonetheless. It is interesting because, you know, as a better, you can kind of set your mind to one thing. And if you think Storm will win this, then you'll set your mind to that stat. And if you think Roosters will, then, as you said, you can kind of twist that stat and use it in your favour, um, which is why it's always great as a live show to see all these comments rolling through and give all these different opinions on how everyone's seeing the games. Friday night opens with the Dragons v Warriors at Wynn Stadium in Wollongong and the line is set at minus six and a half in the Warriors' favour. For the Dragons, Zach Lomax returns to his favoured position of centre because Jack Bird is sidelined with injury. Famanua Brown, he actually signed with them today and he's already named in reserve. So not sure if he'll come into the side, but interesting to note, only one change for the Warriors. Adam Pompey, a winger slash centre traditionally, he moves to the interchange with Jazz Tavunga sidelined with injury. Couple of milestone games in this one, Winnie. We've got the Eels bound Zach Lomax. He celebrates his 100th NRL game, and it's 150 on the board for someone who's being touted for Origin this year, Mitchell Barnett. So, which side do you see celebrating post game in this one? Barnett's touted for Origin. Wow, I wouldn't go that far. I would. I it's would actually wonder if people would tout Lomax for Origin. Or I've got in a position he doesn't wing. want to play, which would be yeah. you'd play him on the wing because. Uh, because an aerial threat winger is such a big thing. And if I'm thinking that far ahead, you know, could he be matched up against Xavier Coates? But that's, um, you know, we can speculate about origin teams. I love to do that. We can do that in a few weeks' time. Uh, oh, as I said, I like the Warriors, right? So my best bet is minus five and a half. When I look at these teams, I actually see a lot of similarities in the style of play. They've got these big physical forward packs. They are dominated by their number sevens. Uh, of course, New Zealand are off this grueling 90 minutes. So they're going to have to recover from that uh, and then bring it, you know, bring a good effort across the ditch. 
St. George did play an easier game, but a day later. So they're on the, the short turnaround here. Uh, I have New Zealand as a clearly superior team, as you would need to, to want to, to think that the line should be beyond six when New Zealand are away from home. I look at it like kind of key position for key position. I think the fullbacks, while being very different players, are close in ability. Sevens are close. Uh, Johnson maybe even having a better year than Hunt. Give me Martin and Egan at six and nine over the Dragons options. And, in fact, I'll give you another bolt. I think if Coruscant was to be injured or unavailable, uh, Egan would be my choice as, as hooker for the Blues. I also go to say Fanua Blake's the best prop on the field in this game and Toho Harris the best lock. So, But Lomax, again, I'm thinking about he, he'll match up against Roger, right? Because he will be right centre where Jack right. Bird's oh, yes. been and Roger's left. Like, that's a... A blockbuster showdown in its own right. I can't wait to watch. And I think Dragons have got the better bench too. Like uh, the Dragons are a gritty team. They, they surprised me really by beating uh, Tigers comprehensively. But I just think New Zealand's got the maturity. And not only that, but the expectation to come over and expecting to win these games because they, they feel like they're a competition contender and they'll be disappointed that they fell 16-0 last week and had to chase the game. Uh, I trust the Warriors' defence during periods where of play where they may be under pressure. And I think New Zealand, if they need to improve this year, it's putting more teams away when they're on top. They really only did it to that struggling Souths that one afternoon. But that could be a focus too, which is why another reason you don't mind laying the points, which I will be doing. And Colt Sanders says, AFB for any time try, he's due. When we talk origin uh, potentials, he is one that, I'm sure he regrets playing that one game or one test for the Kiwis, which ruled him out of origin. Otherwise, he could have, you know, played for Tonga and origin. I believe he was born in New South Wales, actually. So there is that. But look, I tipped the Dragons last week against the Tigers, but I only tipped them because they have mixed their form so far this year with a record of 3-3. Three and three. For that exact same reason, I'm against them this week and I prefer the Warriors. The last time the Dragons won back-to-back -back games was round 24 and 25 of the 2022 season where they defeated the Tigers and the Broncos, who at that stage were not flash hot at all. In fact, the Broncos had to win that game, I believe, to play finals, but they were on like an eight-game losing streak or something. So when I say consistency and mixing form is an issue for the Dragons, it's not something that's popped up in the last two weeks. It's something that has plagued them for two seasons now. Additionally, they do make the most errors of any NRL side at 14 on average per game, whereas the Warriors lead the competition in run meters and they completed a pretty good 81%. So I see the Dragons putting themselves under some pressure in this game through silly errors. And I think the Warriors, with their powerful forward pack and led by Sean Johnson, who is always composed, they'll be able to take full advantage of that. So I think the Warriors will win, and I think they will cover the line. Typically for this one, when I say the Friday blockbuster, but it doesn't quite have that feel this week, if I'm honest, not to be disrespectful to the Eels or Dolphins. They're at TIO Stadium up in Darwin, and the line is set at minus six and a half in the Eels' favour. For the Eels, Blaze Talungi moves to the interchange with Kelma Tuolungi dropping out. Trey Fuller comes in for the injured Hamaso Tabuai Fido. Max Plath returns from suspension. And Sean O'Sullivan replaces Anthony Milford. As I said, we're in Darwin, where the Eels have lost their last two, but overall they've won six of nine at the venue. For the Dolphins, Wayne Bennett has won four of his last five against Brad Arthur. The stats say Dolphins. The betting line says Eels. What says the man himself, Winnie, for this one? Yeah, I like Parramatta, so I've laid the, the flat six there. I uh, think familiarity and Darwin's a real thing. Not that every game's gone Parramatta's way up there, but the conditions are a bit unique, and I think that helps in terms of what to expect and how to handle the, the trip up there. You know, perhaps I should have played Parra last week. That was my lean, but I, you kind of wanted to see the response from Parra just to make sure that they were all willing to, you know, do the hard yards after some disappointing games. And also to solve the halves issue, missing Moses, which we hadn't seen until last week. And Anazi had a great game and, and Moses stepped up and all the key positions really key position players really did in that in that uh handling of a quality cows team. So now I've seen that. Uh I look at this parasite, you just think they are a, a class above uh Dolphins team that I said before. Gilbert, Farnworth, Flegler, Hammer is is four of their best five players at least. It's hard to disagree. You're coming off the Battle of Brisbane, so I think there's a natural possible letdown because you're getting so up for that one. Uh, and you've got the Finns are fifth on the ladder and Para's 11th. So I don't think 
feels take the Dolphins lightly or want to waste this chance to to pick up points to climb the ladder because Parramatta's got much uh, loftier expectations. They are stronger across the board. I'm on them. You know what? I feel bad for this Dolphins side because they are constantly having the depth of their roster tested, which was already quite thin given they only had one year to build their top 30 or two years now, I suppose you could say. Whereas other clubs like the Rabbitohs have had 100 plus years with, you know, all their junior systems set up for years and years. So, look, everywhere the Dolphins have been good this year, in my opinion, the Eels have also. Set completions um, and averages there are virtually identical and the Eels look a touch better in most attacking areas from what I could see. But where I really think the Eels can trouble the Dolphins in this one is their offload game. I thought the Dolphins struggled with second phase play against the Broncos last round. And as you said, it seems logical that there'd be a bit of a mental letdown after such a big occasion there. Uh, the Eels do average the most offloads of any side so far this year. And when we go to the Eels last game, they had 11 offloads against the Cowboys, and that also hurt and fatigued the Cowboys. The one place you do not want to fatigue with your roster being tested on its depth is probably Darwin. The forecast does predict some wins. So that might help. But if you've ever been to Darwin, the conditions are like nothing else. It is so hot and sticky. Um if you are a Dolphins better, maybe you look at the Eels offloads and you think with the fatigue, they force their hand too much and come up with errors and pressure themselves through those errors. But my prediction is the Eels will get it right and defeat the Dolphins head-to-head -head in this one. And don't forget, Friday Night Footy also means an exclusive better same game multi-crafted by Winnie himself. This market profited 20 units in 2023. And whilst we are yet to hit this season, we are getting closer by missing one try, uh, by one try that is, for two consecutive weeks. Both were at double-digit odds. Better also provides further NRL talk and tips in the Fox Sports Lab, which you can check out on their YouTube channel each Wednesday. And always importantly, think, is this a bet you really want to place? For free and confidential advice, call the number or visit the website in the show description. Winnie, there's times in the past, mate, where we haven't uh, done the better Friday night multi. We've looked for a different game. Be honest with me. Are you, are you thinking of doing that this week or you you like this game? I think for the most part, yeah. I think if I really had a strong opinion on a later game, it's but it's not actually about how great the game is to me. It's do I have an edge that we can hopefully exercise? And since I like Parramatta, I think I can build something around that. Beautiful stuff. Sam Edmondson from Instagram says he's got the Dolphins 13 plus as he thinks Parra will play too fast and expansive. And next game, we move to Saturday afternoon. It's the Panthers v. Tigers. We're at Carrington Park at Bathurst, and the line is set at minus 13.5 in the Panthers' favour. Uh, Jerome Luai has been cleared from his knee injury. That's a big one there. Scott Sorensen also returns for the Panthers. That's absolutely massive. Now, plenty of changes to this Tigers side. I mean, where do I start? John Bateman is back. Brent Naden is replacing Fatape in the centres. Galvin is back from suspension. The Fanu brothers are back. Um, and I, I think there was one more change, but there was just so many I couldn't keep up. But the three-time reigning premiers are back. They're coming off a bye, and they are facing the back-to-back -back wooden spooners. This seems a fairly easy one as far as tipping competitions are concerned, but it was only round nine last season where the Tigers shocked the Panthers at this very venue for their first win of the season. So, Winnie, can history repeat itself this time? It's unlikely, but not impossible. Yeah, my biggest notes for the team list for Sorensen's clearly a big in. Uh, we learned that, you know, Nathan Cleary, there might have been some speculation he could return from the bye, but we learned today that wouldn't be the case. And, and Galvin and Bateman are great inclusions for Wes. Now, the funny thing about Penrith off a of bye, I'm wary about whether they're going to come out guns blazing. Like, you kind of need to take it easy in your bye week if you're Penrith. You've had the longest season of anyone the last four years so many of the players are rep players, whether it's either Origin or Internationals. Like, they have to kind of taper their season to a degree. It's not like some other clubs, like, like say, a Titans or a Tigers. Uh, or Tigers probably not the best example, but a team that has an early buy and needs a lot of improvement and, you know, needs to stay in, in as best condition as they can. The counteracting factor would be the point you just made, that the corresponding fixture last year was a Tigers win. And Tigers were woeful last year. so. A Penrith side that is favourite nearly every week, you kind of need to draw motivation of why do we really want to get up for this one. So there's that revenge factor for Penrith. The Tigers were also pretty bad last week, but for me, I don't want to fade Wes off, off a poor showing because I know they're capable of a bit more. And I think when was the last time Wes played really bad? Was it round two when they got thumped in Canberra? And then they came back in and rolled Cronulla, right? So I, I could see. West bouncing back, 
14 and a half. I know you've got it there, 13 and a half. So I think it's 13 and a half and 14 and a half, depending where you shop. Uh, it's a lot of points with no clearing, you know. Like, that's one of the bigger lines of the year. And Penrith still don't have their best player. I just want to remind people because, you know, they've been uh, idle for a week. That That's what's going to – that's why I'm definitely not playing Penrith. But what's going to keep me off West is a daytime game. Like, last time it was a monsoon, but I've checked the weather. It should be fine. You know that this Penrith side um, loves to throw it around. And I think they're – more than ever, they're doing that this year. There's familiarity with Bathurst for Penrith. I think they've made this trip um, to showcase the game multiple times. Seven and the fact them. that Penrith's, yeah, there you go. And the fact that Penrith is off a loss, you know, so again, a good team off a significant loss to Manly, that's probably is a more reason that they would be focused and potentially dialed in. Like, I'm not certain that's the case, but you don't want to go against Penrith when they are. So if I had to tip it, I'd, I'd probably say Penrith 1-12. to 12. But as you can hear, I'm not quite convicted enough to, like, take the start as a best bet. You know, I almost feel the same in a way that I could make reasons why either side could cover that line. Um, look, a key difference, as you said, to, compared to the last meeting at Bathurst is last time it was pouring rain and it was a nighttime game. This time it's at, uh, that was at 7.30 p.m. This time it is in the afternoon. The forecast says slightly cloudy. And when the Panthers play in daytime games, they've won their last 10 in a row at this time slot. No doubt this is a much more improved Tigers side this year. And they do stay in contests if you do like taking them with a plus head start. That's reflected by them conceding the least amount of second half tries of any side so far this year. But with the Panthers fresh off a bye, they got some things wrong in their last outing. I can appreciate what you're saying, that they would need to have a break, knowing that they expect to be there and they have been there in September the last four years in a row, all the way to grand finals. But I am expecting them to work on some of those technical areas they were poor against uh, the Seagulls, and I do expect them to bounce back. The Tigers are on the averaging three tries this year. That's the fourth worst of any side. And I just think the Panthers' defense rested with a week off a bye. It could be hard for the Tigers to crack. So, look, I think if I absolutely had to um, play a line here, I think I'm going to prefer the Panthers. But if you are a Tigers fan and you look at this and say, look, we're not conceding many second-half tries, uh, Benji Marshall will have us up for this game because, you know, the Penrith have been viewed as our big brother and they took our coach Ivan Cleary, etc. You can make an argument there as well. So if I have to lean one way, Winnie, I'm going to say Panthers, but I'm not going to give anything out official for this one. I I'm just going to stay off it. Saturday afternoon, Titans v Seagulls. We're at Seabus Super Stadium on the Gold Coast. Can I just Coast. interrupt you because someone just commented, didn't Please they see. just lose a day game to Manly? And I was thinking the same. But are you going to tell me it kicked off at 5.30? Yes, and now I'm saying the 3 p.m. time slot is where yeah, they've won their that's 10 That's what I assume. Over. But um, the housekeeping there for Dylan, just to clarify. Yeah, my apologies. I, um, and that's, that's all right. That's all right. That's the thing with some of my my, uh, my stats, mate. I can be a little bit cheeky with them. Um, but look, uh, for the Seagulls, they welcome back Matty Lodge. He returns from injury and replaces Toa Fofo with Sipley. Uh, they welcome back Nathan Brown and Aaron Woods on the bench. For the Titans, AJ Brimson remains at 5'8", alongside Kieran Foran in the halves. Philip Sami is actually their fullback. So I'm not sure if people uh, are going to like that move or not because Keanu Kinney is there. Um, and I forgot for the Seagulls as well. Sorry, Ruben Garrick and Jason Saab are both back. Two huge inclusions. Now, my Titans, we're back at home after a greedy display in the nation's capital. We're still yet to record a win this season. And realistically, the task doesn't get any easier with the assignment of the Seagulls. Possibly the biggest storyline here, though, Winnie, for me at least, is Des Haslar versus his former club. Now, I know you said you don't, you're not going to tip the Titans here, but do you see the Titans at least rising to uh, a similar level to what they did against the Raiders for their coach? Or do you think Manly go at Dez and it's the opposite in this one? The Titans played as well as they could have possibly played, given all the circumstances and conditions in Canberra. And Canberra's a good team and all the adversity. Uh, so I can't expect them to, to bottle that up and do it again. I've seen this too many times after the team is dealt the cruel loss, you sometimes get a flat spot the following week. Uh, I was curious looking at the team list. I see a comment, Kinney's not ready. You mean not ready to be a first-grade fullback or not ready in terms of injury? I'm not sure because, yeah, they picked Sami ahead of him. But mm -hmm. JC being out is a huge loss for the Titans because he really is that spark that, like, it almost keeps you in a game defensively just knowing that you have star players you can throw the ball to to create something. In the end, the Titans did create something late in that game 
even without Campbell, but they will miss him. Brimo at six is an improvement. That's what I was calling for before the season started. However, the Titans barely had the full last game in attack, so we haven't seen too much of it yet. Look, the Dez versus Manly angle is going to be really played up, but I almost felt like the Flanagan against Manly was a better edge because he was in the inner sanctum last year, and then he came straight across to St. George. I knew how Seabold wants them to play, whereas it, like it's a different regime, and it's, what, 18 months since Dez has been in charge, and if you say Dez wants to beat his old team, you can also say his former players probably want to beat him. Uh, there's a couple of guys who are out for Manly, like Ben Trebojevic has been really good this year, a couple of props, but as you said, Saab, Garrick. Uh, I also noticed like Lodge, his first start this year. And uh, oh, did we say? Yeah, we said Nathan Brown is going to be good to go. So, uh, yeah, I just think brutal loss, but it's still being spoken about. It's going to be hard to get up. I know that Des will say, well, if you just defend like that, you're going to win more often than you lose. Like, it was incredibly tough. And remember, the Titans had that streak that was like an NRL record streak. You'll, you'll know it. Was it eight or nine straight? Nine what games with 28 or more points conceded. Conceding all 28 record. or more. So it was so logical that they were going to concede 28 or more down in Canberra and given a weight of mountain of possession against them. They only gave up three tries. So it was pretty remarkable. Can they do it again? I am doubtful. Uh, I probably would have played manly. I'm... People often love to tell us when they got early lines. I've never seen anyone in the comments, never seen anyone tell us they got an inferior line. Like nobody's ever played a line and it's moved against them apparently. Or maybe people just don't tell you about that. So when people tell you, oh, I got this line, I got that line, I'm always like, well, yeah, if you only tell me the ones that moved in your favour, you sound like a genius. In any case, I think this line was a little wider yesterday. I think it was seven and a half and that could be the difference for me. I might have played manly. That's the way I lean. I actually do have a bad feeling for you that uh, Manly's going to come in and roll. However, I want to give you uh, one positive possibility. Remember I referenced that that the Tigers getting robbed in North Queensland and how, the, again, it was similar with the, all the, the discourse and everyone debating it, should the rule change and everything like that, right? Yeah. Um, the very next week the Tigers played Brisbane and they were 17-point underdogs and I thought they'd get blown out. They already shot their shot the week before. They went into Brisbane and won. So could the Titans, you know, bottle it up and do that? Uh, I don't think so, but uh, I'm, I'm saying there is a chance. Now, I've got a try score tip from Nicole. Do you want to kind of put a bow on this game or you want to hear from Nicole? Let's hear from okay. Nicole, then I'll go next. Okay. I haven't seen his clip yet, but uh, let's find out who he likes. Hoping to get it off the duck egg for the season, guys. We've got Hamole Olakawatsu. If you look at our model's price, his career strike rate, um, and every other bookie that's got try score prices up that I've checked very quickly so far, he'd be under three dollars. Uh, Bet three six five currently has him for three dollars sixty. He's up against the Gold Coast Titans, that left edge with an injured Kieran Foran. Absolutely love Big Homola to get up. Daily Cherry Evans loves putting him over for a try. As always, guys, part responsibly. Google Wiki Link Tree if you want to check out our Discord server, the odds comparison tool, uh, and the Pundits Preview podcast and article. Good luck for the weekend. I mean. That doesn't even sound value. That sounds logical to back big Olakoatu against us with the points we're conceding. Uh, but look, for me in this one, we oh, Sorry, one more thing I'll touch on, just some of the comments coming through. Like, uh, Shout out Luke. He contributes every week. I love people challenging our picks or sharing their own with reasoning. But Luke says uh, under 10 points for Manly is a gift. You'd have to admit he said exactly the same thing against the Titans last week with Canberra. Um, I think there's some receipts of quite a few comments from Luke. Uh doubting our best bet and uh, I know people let me know about it when uh, they challenge me and then they turn out to be wrong but very few people ever come back if they challenge us and uh, we end up being right so for what it's worth uh, yeah. but is Luke a Manly fan I'm not sure but th in this case I actually more so lean against the Titans and I, I probably could call you out as well Clarky because I was thinking oh. about it you were really confident in round one as was I but oh, the cow uh, the Titans are definitely going to destroy the Dragons. Oh, I'm confident we're going to go down to Belmore. Des's return, we're going to roll the dogs. And then, oh, look, even I admit I don't think we can beat North Queensland and you came half close. And then in the pod a week ago, you said you couldn't really see you guys challenging the Raiders and you bloody should have won. So you haven't had a great gauge on your team, but let's uh, let's hear how you see it nonetheless. 
No, it has been difficult to get a gauge on the Titans. But I do remember last year we lost a, a two games in a row by controversial kind of field goal moments. Uh, one was we were offside and the Dolphins kicked in front to win the game. And the next one, the Eels were offside, but they weren't penalised, so we didn't get to kick. And I think it was only the very next week we first the Roosters at home and got absolutely thumped in the first half. You could see That's the team right. was so down. So I did see uh, Jeremy roll through a comment on Facebook and say he likes Manly minus four and a half in the first half. And um, that, like, based on history, there could be some value there as well. But look, for me, the effort we saw against the Titans last round, and it was really special, but we have to be realistic. With their current injuries and the form that they have to start this season, they probably need to repeat that effort and a bit more. And I'm just not sure they can, or if you can really make a case for that. Additionally, the spotlight has kind of been shown on them now that they were slowing down the ruck. That's what a lot of people believe. Um, the NRL came out and said Casey Badger missed 28 opportunities to infringe the Titans or penalise them. Um, so I think there'll be a big spotlight on them in the ruck this week. I think Seabold will contact the referees and say, make sure you're keeping an eye on that. And we know the Titans aren't the most disciplined team. The Seagulls are traditionally very good at Seabus also. They've won four of their last five. The Seagulls are averaging 35 tackle breaks per game, where the Titans are missing more than that and missed tackles with 39. So I think there's a small chance the same side comes out against Canberra and covers that line. I can't tip them head-to-head here. I have to be realistic. I think Manly win based on form this year and just based on pretty much every stat you could possibly bring up. It all it all leads to a Manly win there, which is uh, very unfortunate for my Titans. <laughs> Saturday night, Broncos v Raiders. We're at Suncorp Stadium in the line is set at minus 7.5 for the Broncos uh, in the Broncos' favour. They will be without Adam Reynolds and Payne Haas still. For the Raiders, Arthur Mariota moves to back row, replacing the injured Zach Hosking, who has been a super coach favourite. Now, Winnie. Let me take you back to round six last year. Broncos, sizable favourites. They're 0-5. They come up against the Raiders, who are 1-4 and and coming off a 41-point loss to the Penrith Panthers. The Raiders go to Brisbane and respond in fashion. They defeat the Broncos at this very venue, 20-14. to I've already asked it once this round. I'm going to ask it again. Can history repeat itself in this one? You said Brisbane was 0-5. Oh, 5-0, sorry. 5-0. They were 5-0, right? Five and yeah. And then Raiders won. Yeah, yeah, Raiders beat them twenty to fourteen yes, yes. in round six. That's right, that's right. Remember that. So that although Brisbane is um you know a tough place to win, the Raiders did get the job done there. Uh, in the corresponding fixture. Uh, yeah, I looked at the lineups. Hosking would be the the biggest loss to either side. I, you know, even though I've gone Raiders, and again, my best bet is Raiders plus eight and a half dollar ninety. But that is also, as you can see on the screen, seven and a half in places. Uh, I still acknowledge Brisbane's the better team and tough to beat at home. You already said it, no Reynolds Haas. It's just, it's just worth emphasizing that again. Like, don't just look at Brisbane on paper and say, yeah, they, they'll make mincemeat of, you know, these are lower sides. Not that the Raiders are low on the ladder this year, but you wouldn't call Canberra a contender, at least. And even I still wouldn't, although I'm backing them this week. Other people might disagree with me and might say Canberra are a contender, but I'll say to you, they should have lost to the, lost to the Titans last week. Don't forget that. Sorry to bring it up again. Uh, <laughs> truthfully, I misjudged Canberra coming into this season. I really like what I see uh, last week, notwithstanding. Like, and, and there's a few players I didn't know too well coming into this year. Schiller, Smithy, Strange, Stewart. I could throw in Sasangi, Solo, uh, all the S names. Uh, these guys are all going really well. And then there's Fogarty. I think he's having a career year too. His kicking game on the back of Canberra's physical pack is a real weapon. I also believe in lucky win theory that you get a win, you, you know, uh, you snatch from the clouds and you get it in the final play and you can kind of treat it like a loss because you nearly did blow a double-digit lead. Uh, but Ricky can also spin it to his troops that, oh, look, nobody believes in you. Everybody's saying you didn't deserve to win. The ref handed you that win. And the truth is they're running third and he's going to tell them that no one believes in them. Uh, I think Canberra's in this quite simply. So I just thought that line was too many points. And I know I've lost going against Brisbane the last two weeks, well aware, but I will take them on for a third. And I really like the Raiders at first as well, especially with that line. But I did put this together, Winnie, and I'd be interested to hear your thoughts um, against where I'm going with this. Their game style last year was really slow and gritty. They wore down sides and they forced them to play a really slow, awkward style. But then we saw how frustrated Ricky was last week when he perceived the Titans 
were doing it to his team and making the Rock slower. Their wins this year have come by margins of 16 points, 20 points, 35 points, and then the one point against the Titans last year, uh, last game. But those three games prior, to me, it's clear they've worked on changing their game plan to a more fast, rapid attacking style and building off the energy of these young players such as Ethan Strange and the halves. And I just think if you have any game plan against the Broncos where you go shot for shot with them, that's the worst game plan you can have against this Broncos side because they are young, they are confident, they are flashy, and they will come up with points. Penrith tried it in the grand final, and they found themselves down bad and chasing. So unless the Raiders can go back to their own way, their old ways rather in this one and really slow that ruck down and force the Broncos to play their previous style, I think the Broncos have a bit too much firepower and strike out wide. So I would take the Broncos head-to-head here, despite what I will admit, I had a lot of early interest for the Raiders with a head start there. They have uh, The Broncos have won their past five in a row at Suncorp as well, Winnie. So they'll be looking for six in a row here. Um, any thoughts in rebuttal to that sort of take from myself there? I think Canberra should actually stick to what works for them. And I think... Well, Brisbane's got the the star power as well, and uh, you know the, the game breakers and the firepower that uh, can hurt you in, in an open game. I, I reckon the Raiders wouldn't mind going toe to toe. In fact, I think Canberra can keep this game close, and that, that's obviously why I've gone a best bet. But I've got more to share too. This is going to feed into my mixed matchup, uh, which has already been organised and is available to back on Toppy. So <clears throat> I'm going to pick like the favourite I like the most this week, which is Parramatta. And then I'm going to go against the team where I've got my favourite underdog of the week, and that's Canberra, which does mean I'm going against Brisbane for another consecutive week with the mixed matchup. But we did win last weekend, of course. So it is Parramatta Eels to outscore Broncos at 220 with a max stake of 200 on top of you. My logic there is I do think the Fins are going to, uh, sorry, the, the Eels are going to have a better time of it. And Obviously, I understand no Moses, but no Reynolds for Brisbane as well. But I, I would have to say I trust the Raiders' defence and kicking game more than the Dolphins. And although the Redcliffe Kings are based further north, of course, than uh, Para, I could see a case where if Para is on top, that humidity is going to kill you and it, it is going to open up. And I could really see, although we said, like, it could be a lot of errors, that there could be a lot of missed tackles too and and there could be errors that lead to points. And I could see a fair few points up in Darwin and that's why I like Eels to outscore Brisbane. And to be fair with that, it would actually benefit our mixed matchup if Raiders went back to their old way and slowed it down and, Mm. you know, played that gritty style. It would would benefit us as well. And that's only my analysis, but I do think it's a chance Ricky considers, you know, trying to slow down this Broncos attack. So it'll be interesting how that game plays out. For what it's worth, I love that mixed matchup. Let's move to Sunday afternoon where it's Bulldogs v Knights. We're at a core stadium. The line is set at minus one and a half in the Knights' favour. They have still named Caelan Ponga despite a hip injury. For the Doggies, they welcome back Curtis Morin, who returns from suspension, and Connor Tracy shifts to fullback. Blake Taff returns via the interchange. And for me in this one, Winnie, if this game was played last round and like we hadn't seen both of those sides against the, their teams respectively, I would have zero hesitation tipping the Knights right now. I'd throw it out there like it was nothing almost. Uh, but after we saw from these two sides last week, I'm almost on the fence in this one. It's Adam Elliott's 150th NRL game. He comes up against his former club. Do you think the Knights will get the job done for their lock forward or do you prefer the doggies in this one? Like milestones is one thing, but like, I don't know. If, like when it, when it's 50, 100, 150, I, I, I do kind of feel like, you know, they're more often than not that's happening here, you know, to every club, every every couple of weeks. It's not something that I factor in, I'll, I'll say that much. Um, oh, I'd, oh, yeah, we've got the Cowboys game. I want to talk about a milestone for that one, uh, but that's coming up next. Uh, so this is the two teams that had the two-point losses. Like we, we've got Roosters Storm, and then these were the sides that suffered those two-point losses. So, yeah, it is kind of logical, I think, to play the Knights here. I, I know that's what your typical punter and and tipsters probably thinking, just because they're recalling Knights, you know, winning a finals game, uh, coming fifth last year. The Dogs came fifteenth, but I like Canterbury more than Newcastle this year, I think, honestly. And I just kind of just don't have the same faith in Newcastle. I watch them and. Like, Hastings doesn't run the ball. I don't know what's wrong. And I know he scored the first try the other night, but he barely runs the ball. 
Uh, and I really rate the dogs outside backs this year, you know, with the addition of Crichton and like now Addo Cars in the mix. And I talked in the recap about like Kiraz was phenomenal. Cherry is a dead set weapon too. And I rate Burton probably as high as anyone. So you could call me out and say I rate him too high. Maybe the same for Reed Marnie. If anything, I'm considering selling some of my Reed Marnie stock. He needs to show me a little bit more. But I'm an owner of stock in both those guys. I see it as a great matchup. Kickout has been a beast this year too. You know, the dogs are at home. So even if you think the Knights are a little bit better, you've got to remember like Newcastle aren't playing at McDonald Jones. They're not going to be as good. And then the big thing is how close to 100% is, is Ponga. Like I still think there's a possibility he could be ruled out. Then the line is going to, you know, shift significantly in our favour. Or Ponga plays because he's the captain and he's tough like he played through the injury last week. And if he's hampered, it's it's advantage Canterbury as well. So it wasn't even like me saying the dogs are the clear, you know, should be clear favourite here. It's just I reckon that this is a toss-up and I'll take a plus half a try in that scenario. Yeah, it's interesting. As you said, they both lost by two points, but I think Knights were minus seven and a half point favourites and Doggies were like plus 19 and a half uh, with a head start. Knights were a little bit lighter. Knights were like four and a half point favourites. But you're right. What you're saying is like they both lost by two, but the Doggies massively outperformed expectation. A hundred percent they did. I did not expect that from them at all. Um, I caused a bit of controversy this week when I said the Doggies were the most impressive side and the Storm were my worst side. People said, how could you have the worst team as someone who won? I didn't expect that result from the Storm. I thought they would absolutely put the doggies to the sword. So I've got a newfound respect for them, but I am leaning slightly the way of the Knights. They've only lost one of their last six to the Bulldogs, and they did defeat them last year, a combined 108-6 to in both of their encounters. But I will say, this is somewhat of a new Bulldogs roster. From the round 24 clash, where I think it was like 42-6, they did a bit better than 66 nil. I think there's about less than half the current roster played in that one. Um, and there's a new belief in the side this year. So big results for the Knights last year, but I don't read into it too much. Where I'm getting my furthest lean for the Knights from, and I know you'll love this one, it was actually Adam O'Brien's press conference last round. Now, I know he can say some crazy things and add some GST to the stories and stuff like that, but he just said, like, we're a tired side and, you know, we've got a big turnaround here and we're going to work on some things. We're going to give our players a rest. That's what they need. And, I got belief from his press conference, and that's so dangerous. It, it's so dangerous to believe in a Knights team based on an Adam O'Brien press conference. As you said, Kalen Ponga, is he 100%? That's the biggest lean in the Bulldogs' favour, in, in my opinion. But I love the Bulldogs' mentality this year. I still favour the Knights, but look, it's so tough to come up with reasons for the Knights. Look, they, for the Doggies, look, they have really improved this year but they still average the second most amount of missed tackles, an average of 35 per game. Um, the Knights at a core stadium, they haven't lost to the Doggies in over a decade. So I don't want to just give a tip based off an Adam O'Brien, uh, and I can hear my dog barking in the background, so that's a bad omen. I'm going the Doggies, stuff at Knights, you're out of that here. That is <laughs> the ultimate omen, mate. Look, it's a wrap. Stop talking. The dog uh, it's is the doggies in win. the background. The Doggies get up. Uh, in fact, they call him Jacob Wynn. Because all he does is win. How good's that one, buddy? How good's Jacob's tips? We love them. Here we do. What, what game was that? I can't even remember. I That's think I remember what That game. was Luciano Leilua, first try. You said you wanted something exotic AF. <laughs> that was my uh, 2001 SGM. Good times. Very good. I messaged Luciano after that, and he said, you still owe him a little bit, so um, expected invoice. <laughs> Whatever in cost parts, I will. We'll shout him a bit. Final game of the round, it's Sharks v Cowboys. We're at Points Bet Stadium in Sydney, and the line is set at minus three and a half in the Sharkies' favour. Sam Stonestream will make his NRL debut with Sione Katoa out. Uh, and for the Cowboys, Semi Valame comes on the wing, replaces the injured Murray Taolungi. Here we go, final game of the round. And, of course, we'll be live within 15 minutes of this following full time. Sharks defend their turf against the Cowboys, who were disappointing last round. And the Sharks have won 10 of their last 11 against the Cowboys, do you see them continuing their dominant run here? Well, the thing is, it's Drinky's 100th game for the Cowboys. I read that and thought... Wow. When did he play his 100th NRL game? Yeah. So <laughs> he played once. I felt like he played more than once for Melbourne, but apparently he did only play the one time. So I think they could use it like a redo for the milestone. They didn't get the win for him in his 100th, but this is your 100th for the club. Uh, however, it's on the road again. Look, it's an even game for me. Uh, I think North Queensland is a slightly better team, but Cronulla are full strength. 
and at home. So I do think the Sharks should be favourites. And I look at North Queensland, like, like Labor was such a revelation at centre, but the last, like, he's not going to be there this year. I'm not convinced in Chester. Yes, I know he did score a try last week too. And I honestly think that Clifford needs to be in the halves for North Queensland. And they might not make that change until they lose multiple games. But to me, he's the superior option over Townsend. And even McLean and, like, Tal Malolo is playing limited minutes. And they say he's got a knee cartilage injury. So it's like they are looking a little wary, whereas the Sharks' side feels a little bit more up and coming, That the forwards I'm talking about. I, I like the Sharks' bench as well. Uh, and I do also think the Sharks could be fresher because they had the bye two weeks ago and had an easier game Saturday night against South. Not that they got it all their own way, but Souths were a mash unit out there, whereas obviously the Cowboys had to fight uh, to the end and, and couldn't get across the line. So I think this line's right. I think three and a half's about right. Uh, and I do think Cronulla will win by you know one to six. And it could be a Sunday night thriller for sure. What did you ask me? Will it go to Golden Point? Like it, it's it's definitely possible. Yeah, that's why I added that for this game because it is very close. Look, I always look at who's joining the stream on Instagram on my left here, Winnie, and I can see the comments from YouTube and Facebook on the right. Uh, on the left, I have just seen Dale Finucane is in the house. So, Dale, I'm very sorry, but I'm tipping Cowboys here. Um, that being said, Sharkies are typically very good at home where they've won four of their past five, and they've looked really solid this year outside of that one shock loss to the Tigers there. So um, I think they could win here, but I am wary of the Cowboys' bounce-back factor. Um, they were poor last week. They've only really played one other poor game this year against the Broncos. They bounced back there. But... It's a really close one. Like, I look at this Cowboys roster, I think they're a bit too quality to put together the same performance like they did last week against the Eels. And I do believe the Cowboys' ball movement could trouble this Sharky side. They lead the league in try assists, line breaks, tries, and points. So they're clearly prepared to play attacking footy. A lot of that comes off the man who is playing his 101st NRL game and his 100th for the club. Uh, but I do think that they can trouble the Sharkies with some of their ball movement. If I have to give a tip here, I'm going to go Cowboys head-to-head but I don't have anywhere near as much confidence as I do in other games this round. Any final thoughts from yourself, Winnie, before we wrap this show up? Uh, no, four best bets. Warriors minus five and a half. Eels minus six. Raiders, my favorite underdog, plus eight and a half. And Dogs plus half a try. And I just wanted to tell you that funny story about the NBA. Obviously, some of the, my futures tips settled. Uh, you've got six divisions and I took outsiders. In fact, what I did was I took two teams to win the division that had the current conference champion. So I took OKC to win the division that actually has Denver Nuggets at 750 and they won it on the final day of the season. I took the Orlando Magic at 11s to win the division with the Miami Heat who were the East champions. They also needed to wrap it on the final game of the season. But what was kind of crazy, bizarre, I just wanted to share this, is um, people were commenting, oh, yeah, cheers. And because I only gave two division tips, like some people multied them together. So you're talking 80 to 1. There's a fellow called Andrew Camilleri, writes, oh, cheers, mate, I multied them. And then later, there's another guy called Andrew Camilleri, and he writes, cheers, mate, you wouldn't believe it, I multied them. And then you see the two talking to each other, hey, mate, nice name. And I'm like, no way. There's two different dudes out there with the exact same name that both listened to the pod, both took both division bets, both multied them together and hit at 80 to 1. Like, that's almost, I think I said in the comments, like glitch in the matrix type stuff. So, yeah. Uh, Read into that what it's worth. Uh, we've got NBA playoffs starting in the next few days. I think play-ins are even tomorrow, so I'm excited about that too. But maybe leagues where we want to butter our bread. So hopefully we can hopefully have a winning round. Four best bets. Let's get at least three of them up. Absolutely. We want to butter that bread and layer it with Vegemite. A huge thank you to our viewers that have been here live with us on this Tuesday evening. We absolutely appreciate your company and your thoughts throughout the show. Don't forget Sunday, within 15 minutes following the final game, we'll be back live uh, and with that, Winnie, I'm going to say thank you very much to our viewers one more time and hand back to yourself for the famous last words. Lego. <laughs>